we're sending this long-running sitcom off with a big bang. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Big Bang Theory plot holes you didn't notice. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at those details or plot points that the writers clearly forgot about on the Big Bang Theory, thereby creating inconsistencies and plot holes. Did you notice them all? Number 10. Where was Leonard during the summer of 2009? I guess I'll see you. Okay. Have a safe trip. Thank you. If we take ourselves back to the end of Season 2, the guys were headed out on an expedition to the Arctic. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and one you'd be unlikely to forget, right? Can I just say something? How about we take a moment to think about where we are right now? I mean, this is literally the top of the world. Only a handful of people in all of human history will ever see what we are going to see. Well, if we fast forward to Season 5 in 2011, Leonard shows a woman a sketch of him from Comic-Con dressed as Lion-O from the Thundercats. He claims he's had it since, yep, you got it, the summer of 2009. Check it out. Jim Lee drew this of me two years ago at Comic-Con. Now, we doubt that Leonard mastered time travel, but if you do the math, it's hard to fathom how he could have possibly been in two places at once. Three months. This is gonna be great. Number nine, where is Penny's sister? I mean, my mom could have just said, Mom, get over it, she's a girl, move on. <laughs> Penny's ever-changing family is a bit of a mystery. For instance, she doesn't seem to know her own father's name, first naming him as Bob, despite his later introducing himself as Wyatt. Well, I'm just glad you finally found yourself a keeper. Oh, thanks, Wyatt. We also learn she has a sister named Lisa that we never meet. Here's what we do know about Lisa. Her water broke at her own wedding, she shot her husband when they were both drunk, and she gave Penny a bikini wax using crayons when they were younger. You know, I remember the first time I got a bikini wax. My, my, my sister did it with melted Crayolas and duct tape. <laughs> However, not only does Lisa not attend her own sister's wedding, but no one in the family even mentions her. Which begs the question, what happened to Lisa? Besides all that, being your dad's the best thing ever happened to me. What about Randall and Lisa? They're okay. <laughs> Number eight, Bernadette's super long pregnancy. We're gonna be parents? We're gonna get to board planes first. <laughs> it's a happy Valentine's Day in the Rostenkowski Wallowitz home when Bernadette announces she's pregnant, but only to the injured rabbit she and Howard found in the hot tub. We'll find another time to tell him I'm pregnant. <gasps> Now, fast forward to December when their bundle of joy enters the world. Hang on, that can't be right. If Bernadette knew she was knocked up in February, then we have to assume she's at least a month into her pregnancy. This would mean they conceived Hallie in January, and come December, it would mean she's been pregnant for 11 months. Now, we're no experts, but we're pretty sure that's too long to be pregnant. It must have been super uncomfortable as well. Poor Bernie. <laughs> That one. Number seven, Penny's career path. Do you have some sort of a job? Oh, yeah. I'm a waitress at the Cheesecake Factory. Oh. When we first meet Penny, she's an actress slash waitress struggling to make ends meet. Luckily, it's Bernadette to the rescue when she gets Penny an interview at her firm to be a pharmaceutical sales rep in season eight. Well, as a waitress, sales was a big part of my job. I mean, believe me, I convinced a lot of very large customers who should not be eating cheesecake to have more cheesecake. <laughs> the only problem is, Penny has no qualifications or medical background. So it seems highly unlikely that the company would be willing to take a risk and hire her. Don't get us wrong, we're glad that Penny's luck changed, but was their boss so scared of Bernadette that he was willing to overlook all of this? You're scared of Bernadette. Yeah, kinda. I thought it was just me! <laughs> Number six, Raj talks in front of Penny. Raj's selective mutism was a running gag for many seasons, and alcohol was the only temporary cure. Are you talking to me? Is there another Penny here? <laughs> However, in an early episode during which Howard is entertaining a lady, the others discuss how to proceed with game night without him. Okay, fine, we'll just play one-on-one -on -one until he gets back. Leonard jokes about splitting Raj in half. Raj fires a comeback, and it seems he's forgotten that Penny's there. Well, the only way we can play teams at this point is if we cut Raj in half. Oh, sure, cut the foreigner in half, there's a billion more where he came from. <laughs> There's no alcohol around, and no one says a word about it, so either he's suddenly and temporarily gotten really comfortable around her, or the writers momentarily forgot about his condition. Hey, if you guys need a fourth, I'll play. 
Great idea. We'll let you be the judge. Number five, Howard couldn't have gone to space. It's me, Sheldon. It's me. I'm going up in space. Technically, I'm an astronaut. <laughs> it was an exciting time for Howard when he was selected to go into space. We don't want to be a Sheldon about this, but in reality, it would never have happened. I was going to freshen up for you, but I blacked out a little on the way to the bathroom. For starters, he has too many health issues. But even if we put a pin in all that for now, there's also the fact that he barely made it through NASA's intense training, even getting his mother and fiance to come take care of him. Surprise! <laughs> what are you doing here? I'm here to help you get through this. Despite all this, though, real-life NASA astronaut and Big Bang Theory guest star Mike Massimino praised the set's attention to accuracy during their character's time in space. So at least there's that. A quick question, I missed it in the briefing. How much urine do these suits hold? <laughs> Number four, breaching the roommate agreement. We know that Sheldon is a stickler for the rules and loves a good contract, so you'd think he'd do a better job at ensuring the roommate agreement is heated to. When you say non-related female, you still mean human, right? <laughs> of course, pets are banned under the roommate agreement, with the exception of service animals, such as seeing eye dogs and one day cybernetically enhanced helper monkeys. <laughs> Both he and Leonard have actually broken the agreement, but these times have seemingly gone unnoticed. For instance, Leonard has had lady friends stay over without giving the 12 hours notice, which Sheldon never even mentions. And despite the contract saying no pets, with very limited exceptions, Sheldon himself adopts a clouder of cats. Hey! Oh no. <laughs> For someone who claims to have an eidetic memory, he sure forgets things when it's convenient. Mom, what an unexpected pleasure. My, my, that's a... Powerful smell. <laughs> Number three, Sheldon's cat allergies. Staying with those cats for just a moment, early on in the series, we find out that Sheldon is allergic to cats. Oh, I hope that scratching post is for you. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I've taken your asthma into account. There's a feline geneticist in San Diego who's developed the cutest little hypoallergenic calicos. However, when Sheldon and Amy part ways in season four, Sheldon decides to get a cat as his new companion. When he worries that his furry new friend will be lonely, he gets even more cats. Why aren't you going to introduce us to your little friend? Oh, my apologies, Raj, Howard. I'd like you to meet Dr. Robert Oppenheimer. <laughs> but there are no symptoms of an allergy to be seen during this time. Not a sneeze or even a sniffly nose. This was clearly an oversight by the writers. But since those cats are just so darn cute, we'll let it slide. Thank you, Amy. Here's your cat. And here's your $20. <laughs> Number two, when did the elevator break? Get I in! Think... <laughs> Fans did get to see the elevator repaired by the end of the series, but what we still want to know is when exactly it broke in the first place. Leonard tells Penny about how it broke, dating it back to 2003. You are so naive. Just like I was seven years ago. But in season one, Leonard says in 2008 that it's been broken for two years, dating the break to 2006. If we take the dish off, it might fit in the elevator. Yes, but the elevator's been broken for two years. Moreover, Howard is seen checking out the broken elevator as if he doesn't know how it broke, even though a flashback shows he was actually present and very much involved in the incident. Give me that. What'd you do that for? I had plenty of time. <laughs> You're welcome. Very strange indeed. Number one, Sheldon Spot. Do you guys mind if I start? Um, Penny, yeah. that's where I sit. As any Big Bang fan can tell you, no one but Sheldon is allowed to sit in Sheldon Spot. And if you dared to try, that's not a mistake you'd be likely to repeat. On some occasions, though, we do see some of the others sitting in the sacred spot, and conveniently, Sheldon doesn't say a word. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's Physics Bowl practice round. I'm Penny, and I'll be your host, because apparently I didn't have anything else to do on a Saturday afternoon, and isn't that just a little sad? <laughs> now, we know Sheldon isn't the kind to let things slide. It also seems unlikely that Sheldon will quietly sit elsewhere if someone else just happens to be in his spot. After all, he did call eternal dibs, so this sounds like it might be a case of the writer's forgetful memories. As a result, I've placed it in a state of eternal dibs. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? 
Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.